Good morning and welcome to our second Sunday in Advent worship service. Uh, we are reaching to you from McDowell United Methodist Church. And on a regular Sunday, this could have been our communion Sunday. So I'm sorry that we all have to make adjustments when it comes to our uh, Christmas or Advent communion experience, but I extend you God's blessings each day as you humble yourselves um, in prayer and reading of the scriptures and following the spiritual disciplines during this Advent time that you will and have already been receiving assurance of the pardon of sins, blessings of God, multiplying in your life, and God's presence in everything that we do. As you see, we have lighted two Advent candles this morning. Let me read the thoughts from Call to Worship. If you have in front of you, you can join with me. Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. O oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. And with those words, we enter into God's presence to celebrate this Sunday of Advent. And may God's almighty arms and embracing arms reach to you wherever you are. Each of us are called to humble ourselves each time we enter in his presence. As far as announcements are concerned, we are still hoping, hoping that on December 20th, we will be here for in-person worship service until, unless otherwise suggested by Bishop and the cabinet. And our Christmas program will go as planned at 10.15 a.m. So everyone is invited. Please come and enjoy this walk through the different stations of Advent. And we are still looking for and reaching to you for um, your time in ministry. If you would be able to help us out in any way, we appreciate that. Recognizing the birthdays this week, uh, Maddie, Lane, and Aiden Ziller, they both are celebrating their birthday on December 10th. And interestingly enough, Aaron and Ashley Imke have their wedding anniversary on December 10th. So seems like this is a very important date in our uh, faith family. So continue to be mindful of these blessings that exist amidst us. Having said that, let me turn to the word of God that um, calls for us to have a little bit of reflection. And as uh, Carol played the prelude for us this morning. Uh, o come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Uh, words of Isaiah uh, are always alive during the Advent season, and he is the one who gives hope to Israel. And in the present age and time, those who believe in Jesus Christ through their faith, they become part of the descendants of Abraham. So we are the Israel in making. And so these are the prophet, prophetic words that come to us from book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 40th, and first 11 verses. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. 
the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. And may God add his blessings on the reading and the reflection and listening and understanding of his word. Amen. This is the second Sunday in Advent, and we approach the coming of Christ with humility, with awe, and also um, with a sacrificial attitude. Today, the book of prophecy, book of Isaiah, speaks to us about the coming of the Lord, but what preparations are needed before the coming of the Lord. Those of you who entertain guests around this time, it's going to be different, but still, you know, part of the uh, hospitality is the cleaning and the dusting and cooking and arranging things and uh, keeping everything organized so even you can relax. Some of us just cannot relax till the last guest leaves the house, but part of the hospitality is the preparation. How do you prepare for Advent, for the coming of the Lord? As we heard in the prelude, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and then some captive Israel. Are we really ready for the coming of Emmanuel? How do you prepare? And so Isaiah, in his uh, prophecy, um, allows us to have a time, a moment of reflection, and think about the preparedness that is needed. Um, just uh, recently, we all have been cooped up uh, inside our houses, same uh, with Frank and I, but uh, two blocks from us, there was a construction of that division street going on in Shinoa. I think it started somewhere in March when we all were ordered to be in quarantine. And it continued to go on throughout these months till the last week in October, just around Halloween time, they opened that road. Um, and this is the division street that connects Pontiac all the way to Bloomington. And uh, the way the construction was going on all springtime, all summertime, and there was a joke going on that this must be the highway to heaven because it continued to go on and on. And um, once in a while, Frank would get very anxious and he will say, uh, drive me to that spot. I want to see what all is going on. And I said, walk. It's about block from our house. You can walk. No, you take me. And I said, even if I make you sit in the car and take you there, they will not allow my car to go in that area because construction is going on. They are preparing the road. And now that it's open, we don't even pay attention what all they did. But the road has been prepared. And the traffic moves smoothly from Pontiac all the way up to Bloomington. 
part of preparation is getting the road ready, drivable, walkable, um, an open channel, a connection between one place, point A to point B. That's what this prophecy and the coming of the Emmanuel is all about. Isaiah begins his prophetic voice in this chapter with uh, something, and he uh, says that there is a crying going on. Now, this, is, this crying is not like moaning and groaning and uh, sadness and uh, death march. But this crying is like a loud voice speaking, pleading, preparing, encouraging. It is so loud that, yeah, it appears like going on and on and on. And we know that this voice came to be in the life of John the Baptist. Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah is the priest doing his duties and the angel of the Lord said, you will be blessed with a son. And Zechariah said, well, I'm so old. So is my wife, Elizabeth. And the angel assured him that this is the doing of the Lord and you will name him John. And then he, Zechariah was kind of perplexed. He said, there is no one in my family by that name. And the angel said, because of this, you will not be able to speak till you, you are blessed with the child and you name him John. And he came home and everybody knew that he has had some special encounter while he was serving in the temple. And yes, once the child was born, as soon as Zechariah named him John, he had to write the name, his speech came back. And this John we know grew up to be John the Baptist. That's how we know. Because as soon as he grew up, he knew his ministry. He went to River Jordan. He started preaching the uh, words of repentance, even called upon the religious leaders, all the abuses that they were doing, and called them some funny names I cannot speak from the pulpit, but you can read in the scriptures. And then he started baptizing people. He was preparing the way of the Lord. He was only six months older than Jesus, but what a mighty job he had. He was the one who was sent to lay down the road. And you know, construction of the road is not easy. Now that I know in my neighborhood how many months it took with all the machines and everything else that is available in today's age and time, how much more difficult it is for a spiritual highway, a spiritual roadway to be laid down for the sake of people. And John did that, removing every pebble, every rock, every stumbling block, smoothing it out, making sure that it is leveled. And he preached, and he preached the message of repentance. And because he preached, Jesus came to River Jordan to be baptized, openly accepting the grace of God. And John received the assurance that the Son of God has come into this world. Friends, many times we think that our lives have no value. Who we are, we are just living as a human being. God has a plan for each human being. From the time you are born, you are already fulfilling the will of the Lord. You are part of that preparation crowd that is sent ahead of time to dig, to level, to remove the roots that are here and there, to uh, sort out all the rocks and pebbles and stones and everything else, and then smooth the way. You will be amazed and surprised that each day your words and actions, how they are part of the ministry of cutting and chopping and leveling 
each human life that you come in touch with, come in contact with, knowingly and unknowingly. You are preparing the way of the Lord. That's when Emmanuel will come to ransom us. That's the first step. Yes, there is noise, there is commotion, there is busyness, and we don't know when it will be over. I mean, seven, eight months for making that much of like six blocks of road, and that too in Shinoa. I mean, it was a highway interstate somewhere I could have understood, but in Shinoa, but it takes time. It takes efforts, it takes cooperation. That's what the ministry of the church is all about. You at McDowell's church have been called to continue to build that road, continue to preach the message of repentance, continue to make disciples, continue to live your faith. It is in doing so that you encourage people to walk towards the Savior. Secondly, not only that the road is to be prepared, the crying out going on and all the construction work, but at the same time something else needs to be done, and that is the sharing of the good news. Good news to be shared in Zion and in Jerusalem. Why these places are important? Because for Jews, this living God, Jehovah, was everything. But they had seen this Lord as a judgment, God of judgment, God of anger, God of maybe dispute and division, God of punishment. But now in the prophecy of Isaiah, the assurance is given that yes, you are human being, you are like, your breath is like, for a moment, you are like grass, you are like flower. But within that time period, the grass and the flower, they fulfill their role in this nature. And you have been made human because through you, wherever you are, God wants to spread the news of the coming of his son. Word Zion is found about 152 times in the scriptures. And this is one of those stronghold, the high point um, in, around the Holy Land, in Jerus around Jerusalem. And there are names that I can read for you, but it may not make any sense to you. But later on, this Zion part also became the city of David. And city of David is very crucial for the coming of uh, the Messiah because Christ is the descendant of Davidic line. And this is where it is considered the presence of God in one generation to the next to the next till Christ came to be. And that's why Zion is important. Secondly, Jerusalem is important because Jerusalem, the holy city, the presence of the Lord, the holy temple, and this is where the worship was conducted. So for us, Zion is that point where you and I gather to celebrate our lives. And we gather at Jerusalem, which is this holy place. This is, for us, the temple of God. And thirdly, Judah is the name of the tribe, a group of people gathering together. And what the thing is that in this prophecy, in this coming of the Messiah, Emmanuel, to ransom Israel, what Isaiah is sketching for us is it begins with preparation. It begins with preparation with one person. It takes hold of the whole worshiping place. And in this worshiping place, there is this whole tribe, the group, the people that are there. Which means that the advent, the coming of Christ, is not just a secluded event. It's not just for one person here. It encompasses, it embraces the whole community. So if you think that advent is not for you, that um, 
the coming of the Savior, coming of the Messiah has no value in your life, uh, read this again. It begins with Zion and Jerusalem and Judah. One person, place of worship, and the whole community. That's the order of blessing that God sends in our way in this Advent. And you know what? Isaiah concludes his prophecy you know, by saying, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. In its own time, this will be done. And you know the story of Christmas is all about this message. Do not be afraid. Beginning with Zechariah. I mean, when he was performing his duties at the altar, when he saw the angel, don't you think that he lost a breath or two? And then to hear that in his old age he will be blessed with a son. And then going back home, not being able to speak. That afraid aspect when you enter into the holiness of God, the message is unbelieving, and yes, we are afraid. When Mary received the message, she was afraid. When Joseph had the vision and was instructed by God, he was afraid. What will people think? And when they moved to Bethlehem for the census, the birth took place, they were afraid. How are they going to exist as a family under limited circumstances? We share the same fear with them. Single parents, unlimited income, restricted resources. That's Advent's story. And Isaiah says, don't be afraid. Why? Because in verse 10 and 11, he gives us the assurance. The assurance of the fulfillment of the prophecy. There will come one with power, with leading truth, strong arm. He will show great works and he will be like the leading shepherd of the sheep. In his reign, there will be calmness, peace, and plenty. And I think Isaiah creates a picture of uh, Psalm 23rd for us, Jesus being the shepherd of the flock. We who enter into the second week of Advent, we are receiving the same message in the prophetic voice of um, this Isaiah. We are called to prepare for the Advent as single person, as the church, the faith community, and then the whole humanity needs to be prepared. Are we afraid? Under the circumstances, what other choice do we have? Yes, we are afraid. But no need to be afraid because God's liberation, God's freedom, God's Messiah, God's Savior is coming. That's what John the Baptist preached. He said, there is one coming after me. I'm not even able to untie his shoes. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. What an encouragement for us in this season of Advent that as we get involved in spreading the good news, however you do it, taking care of your neighbors, participating in the angel tree, mitten tree, ringing the bells for Salvation Army, doing part at the kitchen soup, uh, soup kitchens, or however you participate, you share in the good news. You are preparing the way of the Lord. That's what this Advent is all about. Let's enter into a time of prayer. Our reflection this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, that ushers us into the time of prayer. The body does not consist of one member, but of many. 
Isn't that the truth? When we enter into the time of prayer, we are a body of Christ, not just one person, but we all together of one birth, one hope, one faith. And that's why we are able to bring our prayers to the Lord. Let's bow our heads at this time and offer our thanksgiving and praise. Gracious Savior, loving Master, caring God, as we have once again entered into your presence, lighting these Advent candles, an assurance of the message of coming of your Son. With grateful hearts, we come in your presence because we know that you love us. Your loving and caring arms are around us. Heavenly God, on this day of Advent Sunday, our communion celebration calls us to be repenting of our sins. The same message that John shared in his time. And in this repentance, when we make a sacrifice of ourselves, the way of the truth is already laid down. Make us aware that each human life is important. And for each human being to have this time of preparing, participating in the preparation of the heavenly highway through our faith, through our giving, through our sacrifices, through our dedication, each action lays down the stone or the pavement on this road of love, forgiveness, and freedom. And then the assurance that you give us in this pre preparation that you are with us. We accept your blessings for us, for our families, for our children, for our community, O oh Lord, that during this time of celebration, may we never forget that Advent is not to be afraid, but to believe, to continue to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Messiah. And then the blessings come. Christ's child was born in a manger, a helpless human being. But you provided for him everything that he needed as you provide for us. Right now, many families are going through a tough time. Yes, there are single parents, there is joblessness. Parents do not have uh, income coming in. Children are anxious uh, how this time of celebration will unfold. But even beyond that, how their life will unfold. Lots of worries, lots of questions, Lord, but the answer lies only in one aspect of life, and that is for us to be completely dedicated to you. So even in our limitedness, limited belongings, you save us, you bless us. Loving God, prayers of blessing for those who get to celebrate their birthdays this week and anniversaries, those who are uh, eagerly waiting for your healing strength, comfort, and peace. Surround each one of them. You know our needs, way beyond our words. And let your miracle continue to unfold in us. Bless each one of us. Once again, O oh Lord, let your mantle of love be around us. May we live under the warmth of your light. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, because we ask this prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
<coughs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we go out in the world as forgiven people of God. Our Lord has come to dwell with us. His heavenly presence lights the way for us. The eternal rock has established himself on this earth. We are blessed. Amen. <clears throat>